Hi everyone, Ashley on the Giza YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about seasonal depression. So the other day I got told that one of my good friends passed away. So I've been really sad, of course, and talking to friends and family about what's been going on and, you know, if my friend's going to have services or not. And I guess he um, was sent to Iowa City for an autopsy. They don't really know what happened. Um, I'm not going to say this person's name, but um, rest in peace. And I've been praying for his family and loved ones. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to read to you guys some clinical things that I found from the web about seasonal depression. I, I already noticed before, my fr before I got told that my friend passed away that I've been having issues, but it's been worse after I've been told. So here are some things from the internet. Um, so seasonal depression is called seasonal affective disorder. Um, the specialists to go see when you're getting seasonal depression are primary care providers, clinical psychologists, and psychiatrists. Um, the treatments that can be given to you are, light, they can include light therapy, um, talk therapy, or taking medications, and exercise. Um, therapies can be cognitive behavioral therapy or chron chronotherapy and light therapy. And then medications can be SSRIs and antidepressants. Okay, hold on a second. So some, some symptoms with seasonal depression are usually self-diagnosable, um, but they can include fatigue, depression, hopelessness, and social withdrawal. Um, people can experience anxiety, apathy, general disconnect, loneliness, loss of interest, mood swings, or sadness. Um, they can also have excessive sleepiness or insomnia or sleep deprivation. They can have appetite changes, so you can eat less or you can eat more. Um, you can get irritable and want to disconnect from people. And what's also common in seasonal affective disorder is depression, lack of concentration, or weight gain. So what seasonal affective disorder is, is a mood disorder characterized by depression that occurs at the same time every year. Seasonal affective disorder occurs in climates where there's less sunlight at certain times of the year. So basically, um, it can happen in Alaska. Um, it can happen in uh, Seattle where there's lots of rain, where it's, you know, dark and gray, and like it said on in the internet, you, where you don't get a lot of sunlight. Well, here in Iowa, where I live, it's about to be, the city that I live, it's about to be um, winter time, and or fall time, I, sh I should say, and usually when it's fall time, it starts to get gray and rainy and dark and depressing because... There's not much to do here in this town anyways, but then when it gets, so like usually what I like, I like to do is go fishing, take walks, um, uh, just be in the nature period. And when winter's here, obviously we can't do that. So, um, the colder it's been getting and the shorter days of sunlight that we've been getting, the worse my depression's been getting. And then you know, a slap on being told that a friend just passed away and then it makes things a hundred trillion times worse. So I've been trying to hang in there. Um, I do talk to my primary care doctor. I have a therapy appointment September 27th and I haven't been able to seek therapy prior to this for a couple months because my therapist had to have surgery, so she was out and wasn't able to 
talk to me, so it things have sucked really bad. Um, I do take antidepressants. What I take is sertraline and Xanax, but I don't take like the name brand Xanax. I take Alprazolam. Um, and then I take Trazodone and um, I try not to take the Trazodone or Xanax like until bedtime. I don't take them during the day unless I really, really need to. And there's sometimes my anxiety is so bad that I actually do need to take them during the day. Like my trip to California that I had, like you guys can watch my video, one of my previous videos called California Experience. Um, when I went to California, my anxiety was so high. I had to take Xanax like the whole time that I was driving around with my husband in California and the whole time I was in California I had to take my Xanax and stuff like that so needless to say, to say I was fucked up the whole trip but I didn't want to be but like I had no other choice because my emotions and my anxiety were out of control but I've been feeling really sad really down not really wanting to do YouTube videos not really wanting to do anything in my group on um, social media that I have. Um, I am a certified spiritual coach. I know what I need to do to get on top of this. Um, but I also know as a spiritual coach that when you're going through a hard time, you need to embrace the feelings that you're having, even though they're bad. And you need to sit with them for a, mo a moment and you need to feel them and you need to um, soak in and take everything in and realize the feelings you're having and then you know let them go and because you know that's what we need to do with good stuff too um we need to um uh embrace the good stuff enjoy the sun enjoy your children's laugh enjoy music um enjoy going to birthday parties weddings different celebrations graduations all that but we need to do this, the same thing when we're not feeling good. If we're not feeling good, we need to lay down on the couch. We need to watch a good show, a funny show. We need to talk to friends. We need to talk to family. And sometimes you need to be sad. Um, it's okay to be sad. So um, I'm knowing that and I'm dealing with it. And um, my way that I'm going to cope with it is just watch comedy movies, watch horror movies, because I know people probably think horror movies, why would you want to watch people getting scared and people getting hurt or killed and stuff like that? But like horror, horror movies are fun to me and um, the thrill of it would bring me ha like, like fun and happiness and stuff like that and adrenaline, which is sounds weird, but it's true. Um, and talk to my husband, talk to my kids, talk to my friends and family, and just um, paint if I feel like it, or write poems. I have kind of been in the mood to write poems, so maybe I might do that. But um, yeah, seasonal depression has been kicking my ass. So, But I am going to make another video shortly after this about something that is kind of kind of correlates with this. So... Um, I know I haven't been on for about five days to make a video, but I'm going to make another one after this to make up for the days that have been gone. So it's just been kind of crazy lately because, um, you know, my friend passing away, my, me and my husband have been fighting again. Um, I took those hormone drugs too. Um, I've been having some family issues with eating disorders and stuff like that. Um, so things have been like, like just a big wave of emotions and, and about the family with the eating disorder situation, it was made to be a, like a bigger deal than what it was. And I'm not going to say any names and I'm not going to say, explain that, that part of the story too much, but like. Let's just say that I was way more worried than I was should have been. But, I mean, you should never be w too worried about somebody. You should always worry, you know, you should always worry about your family no matter what.
but sometimes people in the family can make something a bigger deal than what it is. And that kind of happened to me. So I don't know. It's just been a big wave of emotion. So, but anyways, I will get on the next video, you guys. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about seasonal depression and let you guys know what it is, uh, the what stuff is on the web. And I wanted to um, tell you guys what's been happening to me and stuff like that. I haven't been sleeping good. Um, I've been eating a lot more than I usually do if I can eat, if there's food available. Um, but, and uh, money's been tight. Um, and yeah, just, yeah. But, and then I had a friend too. He's not my friend anymore. But I had a friend tell me that he thought about me, started thinking about me in unclean ways. So I told my husband, of course, because you should not keep things like that from your spouse. And, and plus it was the right thing for me to do to tell my husband what happened, like what that person said. So I told my husband what that person said and then I cut the friendship off. And it's too bad because I was friends with that person for going on four years. So um, everything we talked about, every secrets we had and all that, it's gone because they wanted to decide to, decide to be a pervert. So um, that sucked too. But anyways, I just thought I'd talk to you guys about that and I will be on with another life topic.